Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Spin Sheet Happy Hour. Uh, I'm Chris Charbonneau, the associate publisher of Spin Sheet Magazine. Thank you very much for tuning in with us today. Uh, it is uh, March 63rd or something like that. Um, it is, uh, it's been one heck of a week, but it is Friday, thank, thank God, and uh, we're glad to have you here. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, sailing, or excuse me, racing um, on a shoestring budget. Um, this would be a great little topic, um, especially because I've uh, been operating on a shoestring for a very long time. Um, but I do need to uh, take care of some business here and uh, uh, say thank you to our sponsor for tonight. That is Bacon Sales. Uh, folks, if you don't know Bacon Sales, you haven't been around for very long. They um, they have uh, been a, sort of an icon here in Annapolis, but now in, in the general sailing community, uh, they're a fantastic supporter of ours. And um, if you're ever in need of, uh, uh, of some equipment, and especially something bizarre, you can probably get it at Bacon's. Um, so uh, if you have a chance, if you're ever in Annapolis, I would go by their store, if for, for anything, just to say hello, um, but also check them out online. Uh, they've got a lot of uh, really cool and interesting stuff. And um, we aren't able to bring you content like this or um, at, through any of our channels without the, their support. So uh, a very special thank you to them. And uh, I'm going to bring on our uh, managing editor. Everybody should know now. Hey, Molly. Hey, Sharb. How are you? Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. How are things going? Well, you know, right here from the Spin Sheet World Headquarters, which is so sad and empty right now. Not that that's unusual at 5.03 p.m. on a Friday, but it, it does feel kind of weird in here. It's empty. But, the you know, the Internet connection is working, which is why I snuck in here to hang out with you guys. And um, I had to bring my own little drink and my own little carrying case. It's kind of like being on a boat. <laughs> what are you having? I totally forgot, too. Um, I, so... Um, uh, before I get to your drink, um, so boom, I need a haircut like you wouldn't believe. Hold on. You and everybody. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, it's not any better. Um, there, there you go. Now I am the, the virtual bartender. I forgot to mention, uh, so I am, I am drinking a, um, uh, a gin and tonic, classic drink. Uh, but wow. I have a friend that is a a big gin and tonic drinker, and, and I was talking to him earlier, and he um, he was just had a bad week, and I was just like, you know what? So in honor of, of you, I will drink a gin and tonic. So um, here you go. Cheers, Molly. So Molly, what are you drinking? And it better not be Clorox, by the way. No, no, it's um this in this in this twenty year anniversary spin sheet cup is a it's a fruity little rum drink in honor of my friend Chris Newman, who uh. uh who likes to pour in a little shot of rum and then he puts in some apricot. Uh, I used the word earlier. What was the word I used earlier? It's uh, it's juice, but it's thicker than juice. Uh, okay. Anyway, I can't think. Slushy. Of it. And then you put in put it put in a little nectar. 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 Yeah. And then you put in a little seltzer. It's actually it's rather yummy. I have to say uh, that the mango nectar is, is is even better than the apricot. But you know, at some point you had to mix it up a little bit. I've, I've had enough mango. Yeah. So uh, anyway, happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. Um, this is actually. So I'm excited. Uh, what, say it again. I'm excited to talk to our guests. We've got a couple of friends of ours on the program, and yeah. um, and you know, whenever we were thinking about people to be on the program, we realized we have a lot of friends with old boats. This is not an unusual thing. You know, That's there are a lot true. of old boats out there that are fully racing on a regular basis beer can races, weekend races, go to Governor's Cup, get the start line and think, that boat has been doing this race for 40 years. That's true. So uh, it's pretty cool. It is so, cool. Uh, and, and I'm excited to talk to them about their journeys. And I think a lot of people out there, especially if people are new to the sport, they think, hey, you, you can't, it, it's, I can't own a boat. You know, boats, you know, it, it, they, they really have a really, um, an overblown, uh, idea of what it takes to get a boat and you're right you can get a you know a 40 year old boat um that has that, that will perform you know well 
I should say. Um, but you can get one, fix it up, and have a blast out there and be competitive. Um, and, you know, it, it, and, uh, it, it doesn't take as much as I think a lot of people think it does. Um, I don't, if you don't have any experience with it, I wouldn't run out and buy a boat. Um, but once you get out there, once you start participating, you'll have a good idea of what you're looking for. And um, so anyway, I'm, I'm, I, I, know, uh, I know a few of the people of our guests already, and um, I'm excited to hear their perspective and how they kind of got to where they are with their boats. Um, I've even sailed on a couple of them. So anyway, I'm going to bow out. And, uh, so would you, should you give a little warning about the technical difficulties we sometimes have in this program? So believe it or not, folks, um, uh, this is a step above uh, public access cable. Um, and what I mean by that is this will, if we go off without a glitch, I will be very surprised. So um, it is uh, highly dependent on the internet usage throughout uh, uh, my house. Um, my neighborhood and the state and obviously all across the Chesapeake Bay. Um, and the service that we use is pretty good, um, but um, you know we might encounter some technical difficulties. So it's all part of the fun of being live. Um, kind of like sailboat racing, right? Exactly. So we, you know, doesn't it always go exactly as planned? We, so, we uh, adapt. Anyway and uh, keep charging on. So um, anyway, so any of the technical problems, uh, I will try and take care of just as soon as I can. Bear with us. Um, thank you for tuning in. And Molly, uh, I'm gonna bow out here and uh, start bringing in our guests. All right, thanks. Enjoy that gin, that big gin drink. <laughs> hey, there's Mike McNamara. Hi. From, how's it going, Mike? Thanks for joining us. Excellent, thank you. Thanks for having me, Molly. I think I think Sharp is gonna go up. Yep, there's Eric Richardson of Annapolis, who thank also you. happens to be on Team Spin Sheet. We have one more special guest who's also a Spin Sheet Centurion. Usually two of you are Spin Sheet Centurions. And there's Julianne Ferris calling from a well, the the barn above <laughs> <laughs> where she lives on Chase Creek and the internet connection is a little bit better. So Julianne, welcome. Thank you. So what I'd like you to do is, um, uh, uh, first of all, let's see what you're all drinking. Mike, why don't you see, what a, what did you bring to cocktail hour here? This is a uh, Wolf, King. Wolf King Imperial Stout with coffee and oatmeal. Ooh. They were now I know, I know some people that would call that a breakfast beer. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, I, you, you drink that with a knife and fork, don't you? <laughs> exactly. How about you, Eric? What are you drinking? So I have the Terrapin Recreational. You might be familiar with this one. It's actually a low-carb or low-cal version that I just discovered tonight when I stood in line at the Eastport Liquors. I said, get me the Recreational, and they grabbed this. And I'm like, you know what? I could probably use drinking this because we've been drinking a lot around here lately. <laughs> or, or you can look at it that way or you you can look at it i can have two well yeah there's 12. But. Uh -huh. and you miss julianne what are you drinking i i went with a traditional uh dark and stormy here uh complete with a lime all and, right uh, there we go and this is actually one of wiggy's uh one of wiggy's frostbite trophies so cheers oh everybody. excellent <laughs> so, cheers everybody all right, so to get started, um, I like to start uh, up at the top of the bay. And since Mike is our northernmost guest tonight, we're going to have him just give us a, why don't you give us a quick background? I'm going to combine those first two, two questions there. So why don't you give us sort of a very quick background of your sailing and tell us about your boat. Mike, Mike has a couple of boats. I know a couple of you have a couple of boats, but let's talk about your race boats. But, uh, but let's start, just tell us a little bit about your sailing background, how long you've been racing and what kind of sailing it is you do. Okay, so quick background and a little more about uh, my current program. Uh, I grew up in Oklahoma, sailing and somewhat racing a Catalina 30 on Grand Lake with my family, a family of four plus maybe a crew member or two. And um Kind of got away from it a little bit in college, although I did have a, an old Sea Scout donated. And, you know, my brother and I had a Capri 14.2 that we kind of shared, but we didn't really use it a whole lot. 
it wasn't until I moved out to Maryland that I really got back into boating and enjoyed it with people besides my family. And so I um, started uh, crewing for this old guy out of Middle River, uh, Bill Health, on uh, Tartan 10 Artemis 2. And after about three or four years, he wanted to retire. And he called me up and he said, here, please, please buy my boat. I really don't want much money for it. There's a picture of Artemis II, the beautiful Tartan 10. Uh, she's the same age as me. Uh, we're both uh, 41 years old and um, we use her all the time. You can, you can pack a, a large number of crew on board. And, uh, and I have a co-owner, Christine Compton, and uh, we bought the boat about 10 years ago. And um, it's, uh, it's been a great decision. I'm really glad that uh, she's a part of my life. Both Christine and the boat, Artemis. <laughs> <laughs> great. So I wanted to, to just say about Christine. Hi, Christine. I hope you're watching. Um, we When we did our uh, online crew party, we we felt that we, we had a, a bit too much to juggle and we realized we maybe had one or two more guests more than we could sort of handle bandwidth wise and that that is sort of producing the program and, and internet connection so i want to say that well christine we're going to bring you on one of these days because we have a couple of topics where where you might be helpful so just want to acknowledge that you do co-own that boat with somebody and uh and christine will you're next <laughs> we'll call you so okay so julia why don't you tell us a little bit about your sailing history, how you got hooked into racing, and, and tell us about your boat. So um, I was fortunate that I kind of grew up sailing. Uh, you know, my parents, when they got married up in New England, up in um, Barrington, they were living. And uh, apparently after I was born, they uh, <laughs> would net off the V-berth and their old wooden double ender, and they would toss me in there as a crib. So apparently I kind of took comfortable on the water ever since then. Um, we also uh, went through a series of boats. We had a Catalina 30, which are absolutely fabulous. Um, I, you know, in uh, high school, I, I coached at a sailing camp during the summer. Um, I volunteered on the Calmer Nickel during their commissioning year. Um, pretty much anything that floats, I, I try to get out on. So um, I, I like that experience and um, have played with a lot of different things. I started getting really into racing, I guess, about 15 years ago here in Annapolis, the Cal 25 fleet, which is an absolutely fabulous, fun, you know, classic plastic fantastic boat and uh kind of moved on from there um and now i uh i did a lot of crewing with a bunch of other boats and then a few years ago uh a boat kind of landed and uh decided to go ahead and enjoy racing her and it's kind of a silly boat but uh we have a lot of fun and get out there and spend a lot of time on the water <laughs> so you say it's a silly boat what kind of boat is it uh, uh you you broke up there for a second while you were talking uh, yeah, the internet connection is only so so good up here. Um, so I'm on a Rainbow 24. Uh, it's the same boats that they use over at the Annapolis Sailing School. Uh, the urban legend is that they went to um, Sparkman and Stevens and said, design us a boat that can get four Chesapeake sailors home safe while they're drunk in a thunderstorm and came up with this boat. So uh, she's very safe. She's very stable and um, a lot of fun. So that's what we use her for. We decided to race her. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, you can't take anything too seriously racing a rainbow. <laughs> yeah, I, I love when you said that one day on the internet. So Eric and I, uh, Eric Richardson here, who's on the call, he and I, um, back when we were in our young 20-something, or uh, in his case, no, no, I guess we were both young 20-somethings when we, we met at Annapolis Sailing School sailing on rainbows. So I can say that your recollection or, or your urban legend is, is true, except maybe <laughs> with uh, minus the drunk part. Um, you know, Jerry Wood did, did go to uh, Sparkman Stevens and say, design us a boat that would be fantastic for beginners to race that can take a knock down in a thunderstorm. And um, we used to always say about the rainbow that there, do you remember those little toys called the Weebles? Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. We used to say that about uh, about the rainbows. We we have very fond memories sailing on the rainbows, don't we, Eric? Yes, we do. Yes, we Why don't do. you tell us a little bit about your sailing background and um, and how you came into racing and how you found your boat? Yeah, yeah, thanks. So uh, I grew up in Smyrna Park, and my uh, father had a uh, had a rainbow, Blue Devils, actually, and and the fleet, the class for Wednesday night racing had I don't know six, seven, eight boats in it at one time back in the eighties, and uh, so my dad had a rainbow. We sailed on that. We had a little dinghy on Fort Creek in Smyrna Park. And 
Uh, I went to SSA for a couple of their 420 summer classes, uh, sailed there, and then went over to Annapolis Sailing School at like seven, I was 17 years old, I think, or 16 years old maybe, and worked my high school summers and my college summers there. Uh, but after graduating college, I didn't, I didn't really sail a lot, a uh, little bit on boats when I'd come home. Uh, but then when I moved home, uh, my son wanted to get in the sailing, and we got him a little Blue Jay at first and fixed that up. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And then uh, he really got into sailing, so we traded in the powerboat we had for the Shock 35, Blondine Fury. And how we found her was we was really looking for a, you know, a 35-foot boat that we could sail to St. Michael's. You know, it didn't have to be a race boat, but I'll tell you, the, the boats in our price range, we were looking around all up and down the – uh, the bay, there was just not, uh, I mean, there, there's, there's a fair amount of boats that were in good shape, but it took a while to find her. And it's an old race boat. And the previous owner had raced her quite a bit in perf stuff and done fairly well. Uh, but nobody wanted her. It's a, you know, kind of an off brand and, uh, you know, older. And it's, you know, worked out great. So I bought it three, now wait, five years ago from Fred Mertz. And, uh, that's it. So when it when it when it comes to money, we're not going to put you guys on the spot. You know, m money is a relative thing for everybody. A lot of money um, could mean a little bit for a lot of people. But if you don't mind my asking, <laughs> when what you paid for your boat was it say as much as you would have spent for a used car on Craigslist or less or more would can you give us a sort of, you know, where you were with your comfort level and, and the cost of the boat. And I'll start with Eric. Yeah, it was the, it was the price of a, of a, a you know, a used car. Uh, and we basically traded our power boat for it. So there wasn't, you know, wasn't any new money thrown at it, but it was, you know, a decent car on Craigslist. Yes. Yeah. How about you, Jillian? So, <laughs> Well, we could just kind of land it in my lap. Um, I had been looking for something a little fun and uh, simple to get off the dock for single handing. Um, and I had a sailing friend here in Annapolis who was getting ready to move. And uh, she was kind of looking at it as um, she wanted to find a good taker for her, her beloved boat. And uh, it kind of worked out. So um, it was just actually kind of something that landed in my lap. Uh, it wasn't a deliberate acquisition, but it kind of yeah. seemed to fit the bill. And after she was around here long enough, I'm like, you know what? I'm by racing her for the fun of it. You know, why not? Uh -huh. <laughs> so there's a lot of good, you know, inexpensive boats out there. <laughs> Oy. Yeah. That's great. I, I was just sitting on a friend's boat this week and uh and it was a freebie. And I'm sorry, Julian, if I cut you off, your sound quality is um is so you're you're in and out a little bit sound wise. So as a as I'm talking to Mike. You might um, give Sharb a call on his cell phone, and we might see if we can uh, we can get you um, a speaker phoned into him. So because we see okay. your picture clearly, but you're in and out um, on right. sound quality. So call Sharb's cell phone, okay. or, or he'll call you. And uh, and Mike, how about you, Craig? I know you have a boat partner, which has to make it a little bit easier. Right, right. So we split the cost uh, 50 50 and the cost was the exact same amount as the previous owner paid. Uh, for the new engine that he put in just three years prior. Uh, okay. So, you know, we basically got the boat for free. We paid for the engine and it had, you know, sales that were all, you know, one to three years old. Uh, so it was a really, a really good find. Yeah, that's cool. And um, I, I, I should add that that I, I still remind people every day and uh, people send me notes asking if I have a tip on where to find a used boat here and there. And, Go to spinsheet.com. We have used boats. We there are more used boats on the market right now, and it's it's like a fire sale. So anyone who's looking to buy a used boat, there are a lot of them on the Chesapeake. They're available right now. Make an offer. That's what I would say to that. Um, okay, let's talk about maintenance. Um, I recently, as I I have a little boat fantasy um, working on in my own head too. Um, Eric knows a bit about it. I, I've actually talked to Julianne briefly about it, but I've asked Eric some questions about this. So this question is is not for me as a racer, but I think anyone who's considering buying a boat, they're fools if they're not thinking a little bit about the maintenance aspect of it. So um, 
So, uh, Mike, why don't we ask you about maintenance? Sort of tell tell us a bit about what you've done maintenance wise to keep your boat going. And has it, you know, was it more than you expected? Was it less than you expected? Let's talk about maintaining a boat. So we've gotten kind of lucky throughout the years, getting bargains or handouts here and there on, you know, a slip for the season or, you know, a gallon of Black Widow here and there uh, from a guy. But, you know, uh, we basically, the, me and Christine and the crew will do a bottom job ourselves every year. Um, mm -hmm. I'll change the oil every year. Uh, you know, when the, when the lines need to be replaced, do they get replaced? When the sails need to get replaced, we usually stretch it another year or two before we do that. Um, you know, I mean, it's, uh, she, she's got good bones and so she's a safe boat to get around. We, uh, if we wanted to win races, we'd spend more money, but you know, that's, that's not necessarily what it's all about. Yeah. Have you, have you become handier? Uh, or, or more technically proficient or more, Absolutely. is that the right word? Yeah. I don't know if technically is the word I'm looking for, but have, have you got a little handier since you've owned a boat? Absolutely. You know, I mean, there's a lot of information out there you can find on YouTube. There's a lot of stuff that I can do myself that I didn't realize I could do. I'm, I'm not qualified to do fiberglass and to fair keels and to, to spray on bottoms and change oil and zincs and, and all this stuff that... I had no idea I could really do until you kind of, you know, talk to a yacht yard and find out what they want to do it for you. <laughs> and then you kind of decided to, to give it a go. Yeah. Okay, cool. How about you, Eric? I already know the answer to, the, to this question from you, but I, I, uh, why don't you share it with others? Because it's been instrumental. It's, hel it's helped me a lot sort of working through my process. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, and, and our boat, you know, we had a survey done when we bought it, and uh, the guy was like, man, this thing has great bones. You know, it is their hull is fine. You've got a Yanmar 3GM30 in there, and it looks like it's been taken care of. You know, the rigging looks good, but, you know, it is a boat, and it is a 1985 shock, so it's 39 years old or something, or 35 years old. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're going to need to do some – some maintenance and some work. And over time we have, uh, you know, replaced lines and blocks and drilled new track things and watched a lot of YouTube videos and uh, the Yanmar engines are really easy to work on. And we have, we're lucky because the access to it is basically three sides of it. You can pull off the cover and get to it. And I learned so much about, you know, changing oil is not that hard. Bleeding fuel lines is not that bad. Um, mm -hmm. un, uh, un, uh, unclogging the exhaust elbow to get the coolant to go through before it was, was more. So we, we spent a lot of time at Bacon's actually uh, getting stuff and they have um, used sales there, which we've looked at before. Our sales now are uh, the original ones that were with the boat when I bought it and they're Dacron. Um, but I have to tell you, it, uh, you know, the maintenance part of it, you have to be determined and have to be, uh, driven to do it and your crew will help you too you know but you have to uh at least in our situation we don't have a ton of money to throw at you know new stuff so we're constantly fixing and repairing as a crew or jay and i'll go out there you know for the weekend and do some stuff and you know get it ready to roll for the weekend so it's a big part of keeping it rolling each week but you don't really when you're racing every friday night you don't want to have a friday you can't race you know yeah. So you you guys have both answered one of the questions I had is whether your crew helps with maintenance. And it seems to me that both of you have crews who do help you with your maintenance. Cool. All right. How about you, Julianne? Tell us about the maintenance you've done on your boat. And um... yeah, that's, that's an interesting, you know, topic. You know, when you want to get into racing on a shoestring budget and you don't have a whole lot of money to spend, you've got a bunch of boats that you could choose from. I mean, you could get out there and um, be on a laser by yourself with something you could car top. And the maintenance on that is going to be a little low. You want to get to a higher level and, you know, get some more expensive sales, you can. Um, what I like about uh, Wiggy is that she is pretty low maintenance. She's a fairly bulletproof boat. So I'm not spending a lot of time on maintenance. I'm spending time on the water. I mean, we all want to be like Gary Jobson, a short tacking up uh, Spa Creek in this beautiful piece of boat porn. But... Some of us also just want to get out there and sail. And so that's kind of been our attitude with Wiggy Wiggy is, you know, we're just out there having fun. Um, she may not 
well, she's pretty, but she, you know, she, she made it a little bit of work, but we're out there, we're doing it. We're keeping it really, really simple. I mean, she has an outboard engine. Um, we, you know, clean the car out every once in a while and, um, keep things simple. Uh, and that's, that's the whole thing. Do you want to spend all of your time working on your boat, spending money, you know, getting into a high end, you know, program, or do you just want to get out there and race? Um, there's, so many fabulous boats like the Cal 25s, which I, I cut my teeth with sailing or, or racing in the uh, Annapolis area, which is a fabulous fleet. Um, there's also like boats like, you know, like the Albergs, another fabulous cruising boat that you can get out there and race on and also use for cruising. Um, so there, there are a lot of choices. I guess you got to get your comfort level with like how much do you really want to spend and how much do you really want to get out there and race and have some fun and, and get out of the water. You know, you really want to get competitive. Yeah, you can go out and buy something really fancy and spend money on black sales and things like that. But <laughs> And I will give another plug to Bacon's because we have uh, gone through quite a few of their sales on Wiggy. We've had a lot of fun with that. Um, we found something in their, their bottom bin, which is this crazy thing we call Big Greenie, which is just this monster thing. And my perf certificate took a big hit this year on that <laughs> because of it. But you know, light air Friday night beer can racing for 150 bucks. I got this fabulous new sale that has just been, you know, wonderful. That you don't need to go out and spend thousands of dollars on a new sale. So, <laughs> all right, we got a question from the audience here. Let's ask Julianne about Spinnaker runs down Ego Alley. <laughs> <laughs> because we could. Nobody <laughs> had to do it, right? <laughs> Because we could, uh, you know, again, it's because it's a simple boat, she's nimble, she's easy to handle, um, you know, trying to do something that on a big boat with a lot of complex systems and everything, it's a little bit more intimidating. If you have something small that's simple, you have crew that are comfortable aboard, you know, with easy, you know, the lines are right there. We're not, you know, worried about complex things all over the place. We can do silly and, and fun things like that, like <laughs> run, run away in rainbow down Ego Alley. <laughs> I remember years ago, a friend of mine said, I ran into the, I saw these people tacking down Ego Alley. What kind of idiot does that? And I started to laugh and I said, everybody, <laughs> everybody tries that at some point. So we, we have another, uh, oh, it's, it's, um, Eileen McCausland is asking a question. Are there any jobs out there you try to do yourself to save money that you regret not outsourcing to a marina? That's a good question. Mike, you wanna you wanna answer that one? Yeah, every year the entire bottom. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's not that bad. I mean, we haven't had anything like completely blow up. You know, when there's a when there's a problem and you don't know what the problem is, you know, like uh, how to solve it, you're trying to diagnose it and you just get stuck and you you, you call friends, you know. I mean, it, yeah, it's easier to take it to a marina or have a professional look at it. But then when you realize all it is is like a loose screw or something like that, you feel like an idiot for paying, you know, a lot of money for that. So it can be frustrating at times, but then it's very rewarding when you do figure it out on your own and you feel good about yourself. Yeah. What do you think about that, Eric? Anything anything uh, you try to do yourself you regret? I don't think so no we i mean the bottom i had the whole crew there for or, or a number of them to help me with it um and we do that every two years the uh one thing i did outsource is when our force day broke um i had to obviously get a rigger for that but we haven't had anything we couldn't handle uh myself or with with the guy you know our our team uh fixing do you have any anything to add to that julianne um, no, but the, again, my maintenance is very, very low on, on a rainbow, fortunately, because she is a, a pretty public group. Um, most of the jobs are fairly simple to do myself. Uh, I've been fortunate with that. A lot of it's just kind of cleaning, you know, and trying to keep the beer cans out of the village. But <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, uh, it, like I said, it's the, the maintenance. I think there's, you know, you're, you're kind of circling back around to like the, the cost of you know, racing on a, a shoestring budget. And a lot of it is maintenance. Uh, the big thing was I did splurge on a soda blast uh, when I went for the first big haul out. And that was a big expense. You know, we had her hauled out and soda blasted her down, put a barrier coat on and put a nice big 
she's got a nice hot Trinidad bottom on her. Um, mm -hmm. But that's, you know, every you know, every two or three years. I never hold once a year. I uh, keep it minimal. I call up, I do a short haul during lunch, and I burnish the bottom myself. Uh, she's due mm -hmm. for another one. But uh, it's a nice thing about kind of keeping those, those maintenance costs low is um, you can outsource some things, but depending on what kind of boat you choose, you know, you keep the, the, the budget down by, you know, doing some kind of simple stuff yourself, yeah. Yeah, so there might be some people watching who – um, have never run a racing program. They've just hop on. They've just hopped on somebody's boat as crew, or, or or maybe they're interested in racing. They haven't done it yet, and they happen to be out there watching. So, can we can we just address a bit the costs that aren't related to the boat that are related to racing? You know, the the fee, the uh, I don't know, the lunches or what, whatever expenses are involved in in um, in running a racing program, Julian. Since since you're already talking, you want to want to address some of those costs. It, yeah, well, um, the mandatory fees are really the cost of the regatta. You got to pay to, you know, contribute, and, and it's usually that's minimal, and that covers the, the volunteers to kind of, you know, give them what they need to, to run the races. Um, one of the nice things you can add on top of that is, you know, your membership with CYRA, uh, which supports, you know, Chesapeake Bay Sailing, um, your local yacht club. Um, me personally, I'm a member of Chess, uh, single-handed or short-handed sailing society. Uh, which is another good one. So you, you want to have that. You don't have to. Um, but those, those little fees can kind of get up, you know, with U.S. sailing. Um, but it, the cost, again, you can, you can kind of pick and choose really what you want to do. Me, I kind of throw it full boat because I like to support the groups that are supporting sailing. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have anything to add to that? Any Any fees that, I don't know, maybe surprised you or that people who haven't done this wouldn't know about at all? Ah, uh, just to reiterate that the, the like the frostbite fee in Annapolis, I, I think it's uh, 150 bucks or something. It's not that much, or maybe it's 195. And the same thing with Eastport's uh, Friday night races. I think they're 100 and 180, 190 or something for the year. It's like you know 12 races or something. And you know our crew always pitches in for you know lunches and beers and stuff. You know it's you know pretty communal. Mm -hmm. How about you, Mike? Yeah, I mean, you know, I just had to go out and drop like a few hundred dollars on a new trophy case. You know, they were just like getting cluttered all over the house. And, and so it, well, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. I'm going to let you answer our next question then. And that is, uh, how um, are you pleased with how competitive you've been on your boat? Yes, absolutely. You know, I mean, we we got a good boat. You know, she um, we uh, I would say the highlight was uh, winning Screw Pile in 2013. There was 20 boats in the fleet, including Bob Fleck, the uh, five-time S2 National Championship. I know you're watching, Bob. And he actually is watching, and he was the little rock. <laughs> The LeBron Trophy winner last year. And uh, a parent trip who has won all sorts of trophies. And uh, Ian Gordon, you know, on that uh, B1 boat. It was just, it was such a great memory for, you know, me and the crew to have that. Um, it That in and of itself made buying the boat all worth it. I mean, like people, people spend way more money than that and don't have that kind of success. So it was just, you know, everything ever since then has just been like bonus. And Bob Flex says, "Hi, Mike. I just saw that pop on the uh, up on the Facebook here. So, uh, so that's great. Uh, how about you, Eric? T tell us about 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 your. You know, I know, I know for you that there's been a there's been a progression of yeah. uh, competition. Yes. It's been Absolutely. exciting. When we started, I mean, we were. Uh, I mean, I was cobbling together crew and, and people, and, and and I was able to get crew, but we didn't have a regular crew, so we always showed up with a different three or four." Uh, different three or four folks and uh, you know we didn't do that well in the beginning but once we got a set crew and a navigator Jay and his brother Craig and my old friend Dave and we actually met some uh, friends from Fred Mertz uh, when he owned the boat we took uh, his uh, his old crew out sailing once and, and they wanted to jump on board so we now we have a good crew and we're making progress in frostbite we'll uh, finish second and third, and in UIC beer cans will finish second and third, and you know, and on to the the sales aspect. Here's a picture actually of uh, this is frostbite this year, and those white sails right there 
are ours, and those are 15 to 18 years old. And that the Italia, that's an Italian boat, brand new behind us, and Salona or a Cookie Monster down there. So those sales cost more than our boat. Um, and we we have beaten boats like that, not that often, but we have, and we feel like we're in pretty good shape this year, especially in an air of eight knots or so. Uh, the boat will really go, uh, and, and we hope to, to get a win like Mark. All right. Well, Julian, we're going to ask you how you feel about um, your level of competition on Wiggy, and then we have a couple questions from the audience. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I race with the perk, which is a handicap. Um, and so our level of competition is, um, I'm usually the scratch boat. So pretty, pretty much I got to like actually finish, you know, pretty, pretty well, it's kind of tough. Um, but we're out there having a good time. Um, but for people that are out there trying to get racing on a budget, one design is a good way to do it, uh, you know, in a kind of competitive way. You know, again, going back to the Cal 25s or, you know, even J22, the J30s are, are another, ex, you know, inexpensive entry-level boat. Um, but With a very supportive is, fleet, which is key, right? The what? The, the, they also have a very supportive fleet in the J30s, and that's uh, and they're fun, too, but that they're supportive, that's key. And that's mm -hmm. So the one design is a really nice way to get into that if you want to be a little bit more competitive. I'm in Perth, uh, which is handicap racing, um, so we kind of have to take into account the imbalance between the boats. Um, and how do you rate a rainbow against a J24, which is what I race with against, you know, on, on the uh, Frostbite series. So it's a, little, it's a little tough sometimes, but we kind of take the attitude that we're at least out there having a good time. Um, and the level of competition, you know, if you get two boats out on the water and they see each other, it's a race. Uh, this just happens to be a little bit more of an organized fashion. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a weird, I've got a weird shadow on me. All right, we usually travel over a thousand miles to get to a regatta. There are costs for travel, food, boarding. What is reasonable to ask your crew to contribute? What do you guys think about that? I don't know if you tra if you travel at all on your boat. Uh, I know Julian, you travel up the river, but. <laughs> I, I don't travel on my boat. There's no accommodations aboard or anything like that. Um, I keep all my racing local on there. I, you know, really within you know an hour or two, um, I'll go out and we do frostbite, spear can. Um, I'll do charity or God is local. But unfortunately, with the budget that I have with the boat, I don't make the choice to go travel with her. And um, that's just been something that I've had to had to do. Yeah. So, Mike. Maybe you can address this one. Have you done some traveling on your your um, J70? Yeah, we do. And uh, everybody kind of pays their own way. Um, I mean, there are other programs out there with probably better sailors than us where the skipper pays for everything. But uh, that's not the world I live in. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, food, lodging, travel, uh, I mean, it's fun, so it's, it's willing, you know, I'm, I'm willing to pay that when, when I'm crew and, uh, you know, when I'm skipper, you know, the crew pays their own way. So it's, um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. You know, I mean, there's no, there's no one way, there's no right or wrong way, but whatever, whatever makes sense, you know, whatever gets you on the water and, and gets the team uh, pointing in the right direction, then uh, it works. Eric, do you have anything to add to that? I know you've done some at least traveling on the bay, right? Yeah, we've been to Baltimore, Oxford, St. Michael's for those distance races. And it's all, you know, everybody pays their own way. And, you know, there's no real, we, we help with rides. My wife will come over and give rides back from Oxford to St. Mike's or something. But I mean, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of expense there. Um, you know, we all may go to dinner or something. It's, you know, no big deal. Everybody pays their own way. Yeah. Well, I think that might be a bigger topic for, um, I mean, that might be a topic in itself, bring on some people who travel extensively to one design regattas around the country and stuff like that, because that can be a big expense. And, um, and it's nice to know what's, what's acceptable to ask for your crew with that sort of thing, but that might, that might not, might not apply to you guys as, as much. Um, let's ask just, um, but I have two two more significant questions, and uh, one of them is just about the fun factor. Like, what is what's fun about what's fun about racing an old boat? 
you know, and I talk to people who are always like, oh, the boat's a lot of work and stuff like that, but they tend to say it with a smile. Oh, my boat is a lot of work and I know they're not thinking of getting rid of it or anything. So Eric, tell me what's been yeah. great about, I know yeah. that you love racing. Absolutely, yeah. So when we got the boat here, you know, the fun part is the crew and the times that you have with them and being on the water and sharing stories. And, and there's a few of us that have kids in college and or, or I have a kid in high school and my, my crewmates have uh, kids in college. So in the conversations, it's just a good group of people to hang out with and a lot of fun. But, uh, but one of the fun things we did is the first time we put the kite up uh, before we moved the boat to Annapolis, we, we saw that it was white. And I was like, oh my gosh, we should tie dye this thing. That would be cool. So I did a little research on how to do this. And now we have two tie-dyed spinnakers. You might have seen them in one of the Oxford races or, or Baltimore. We've used them there. Um, and then we made crew shirts. We made crew shirts, and, the, and they're just white spin sheet shirts that are tie-dyed. And everybody loves it. Everybody sees us on the water and they're like, oh, my gosh, there's the tie-dye guys, you know. And uh, it, it's it's just a tremendous amount of fun, the, the friendships that I've uh, formed from new people, the old people, the old folks, or the old folks, the people that I have uh, brought on the boat from years ago, sailing at Annapolis Sailing School, and then yeah, new folks that I meet. So it's, you know, it's just a lot of fun. How about you, Julianne? Tell us about some of the fun you have on Wiggy. <laughs> well, we've had a lot of fun on Wiggy. <laughs> like Janice said earlier, you know, pulling the little uh, spinnaker runs down Ego Alley. But, uh, you know, during the racing, it's been nice because she is a training boat. I've been fortunate that I picked up actually from the – spin sheet crew listing parties um i've gotten a lot new crew aboard we went through uh, i want to say like 18 or 20 different people within the last just 12 months i was looking at the numbers the other day uh just to get out and kind of experience the sailing so i i don't have a, a very cohesive crew um you know teamwork it's more like getting a lot of people exposed to sailing and kind of running with it that, in that way uh which is neat um and, and again it's just you know, like I said earlier, you can't take things too seriously racing on a rainbow. Even the, you know, the previous owners like, yeah, you're out there in the equivalent of a VW club. If you want to get out there in a Ferrari, spend a lot of money on high end stuff. Sure, you can do that. But we're just kind of out there goofing off. We're going to get around the beer cans. We're going to kind of learn, um, get more people exposed to it and enjoy a Friday evening. It's more like social hour than anything else. So that's kind of uh, our theory. <laughs> Yes, sailing into the sunset. How about you, Mike? Tell us how much fun you have racing on Artemis. Yeah, so obviously winning is fun, but you know you're not going to win all the time. So we do other stuff too. I mean, it's it's nice to have a big boat where you can have a lot of people on board and and just have a lot of conversation and things like that. But you know, we'll do like the lighted boat parade. We'll go to Pier Six concerts. You know, like I can single hand my boat pretty easily just to kind of relax and chill out and drink a beer and. You know, there's a lot of there's a, there's a huge treasure of this Chesapeake Bay out there that's just to be had for all sorts of stuff. So you know whether it's a delivery or a race and you're you're in the lead or you're climbing back or whatever, it's it's all fun. Great. Well, um, I think we have a I think we have another good question coming from the audience. They they're actually asking more questions than we're going to be able to answer. But it's nice to see so many people watching, and it's nice to see them asking questions. So he's going to pop that question up. I have another one for you when it's done, but um, he promised me he'd put one up. No, I, I, it was a terrible question. No. <laughs> Continue on. <laughs> okay, well then I'm going to ask my other question. My other question is. Um, if you had a friend considering buying a boat to race, um, or even just considering buying an old boat, what would be the advice that you would give to that friend? I'll, uh, I'll start with you, Eric, because I've already asked you for advice. So go ahead and go ahead yeah. and give us some advice. Maybe yeah. keep it. Maybe maybe you can make it a little bit more uh, racing centric because uh, that's not yeah, the kind of boat I. I, I think you know. Uh, you know, thinking back to what we went through, uh, when we started, we were doing, you know, all sorts of, uh, not all sorts, of, but a bunch of spin races, and we were in uh, races with Slush Fund and all of these these really high-funded, you know, really well-funded boats with very experienced crew, and, you know, we would make our way and beat a few boats in these things, and one of my uh, guys on the boat, you know, said, you know, Eric, what kind of boat do you want to be? What kind of what kind of racing do you really want to do? Because we were doing a bunch of different things, and that made a lot of sense. And we kind of decided we're going to be the frostbite, 
and the Friday night EYC uh, boat for non-spin class and have fun and do well and we're getting better and an occasional distance race in non-spin. And I think that, that what I would ask the person asking me is, um, you know, what, what do you really want to get out of it? What are you looking for? Is it this, is it, you know, what percentage of it is, is the social aspect? How much do you really want to win? Um, how many people and how big a boat do you, do you think you want to do? And, and do research on these things and figure out where your best place may be because, you know, just because you think you want a 35 foot boat and you go out and do this, now you're stuck with this old 35 foot boat if, you, if that's not what you really wanted to do. So I would say do a lot of thought on that front end of this thing, figuring out what you want to get out. Maybe take some rides on some boats, get on spin sheet screw finder and take some rides and, and really think about it and ask a lot of questions. And when you pull the trigger on it, you know, obviously you get a survey and you, and you think about the bones of the boat and then you make a list of some of the things you need to get done before you can actually hit the race course. Um, but look at all that in advance. So you're not, you're going to be surprised by things. Yes, but try to eliminate those as much as possible. And, you know, just figure out ahead of time, possibly where you want to end up. And that way you'll have a better shot at it rather than just, you know, going out to get something because that's what Bobby has or Jimmy has, you know, think about you what you want to get out of it. Yeah. How about you, Mike? What would you, what advice would you give to a friend considering buying an old boat for racing? Well, I'm sure a lot of people kind of have a predetermined make and model in mind, you know, like they want to get in this fleet or that fleet. And so they just go find something that's for sale. But, um, you know, like how I stumbled on Artemis, um, I, the guy that had it before me took really good care of it. I was not in the market for a boat at all. He just, was getting out and I seized the opportunity. You know, I'm like, I'm that's that's a great deal. It's a great boat. He took really good care of it. There's not a lot I gotta do. So fine, I'm a sucker, you know. Uh, <laughs> you got you got me. Um but yeah I would say find a guy, you know, if you're not gonna just, you know, search the the listings for a boat that you you want, find a guy that has taken really good care of it and has a good reason for selling it. Mm -hmm. Anything to add to that, Julianne? I saw you nodding your head at a couple things that Eric was saying. You guys, I mean, you guys both have just pretty much nailed it. Uh, it's you got to figure out how much time do you want to spend maintaining, how much time do you want to spend on the boat? Do you want to be able to go out and sail, you know, by yourself? I love the fact that I can have my boat off the dock in five minutes by myself sailing. Um, yeah. But some people want to have something with a big crew at eight. Um, and they'd like the more competitive spirit. So you kind of got to evaluate, you know, what do you want to get out of it and find something that's a little bit more appropriate that way. Um, you know, do you want something beautiful? Do you want something that you're, you're, do you like spending time working on your boat or at the end stuff that you can do yourself instead of outsourcing it to, uh, uh, you know, a, you know, somebody that somebody has a little more skill set than you. Um, or do you like working on your boat? You want to do that. So it's, it's kind of, it's a very personal decision. Um, like I said, my choice was to kind of keep things very simple with Wiggy. Um, believe me, if I had a different budget, I'd probably be somewhere else. <laughs> so it's a yeah. personal decision. Well, you guys have been so great. I've learned a lot about, um, about, I, you know, I, I we choose people to be on this program for a couple of reasons. One, we think they might be good on camera and, and we, we see they're enthusiastic and they're, they're experts in a subject that we're not experts in. And since you guys own old boats and you take them around the race course every week, you're experts in something now, like it or not. And, um, and I've learned a lot. So thank you very much. So cheers to you guys. Thanks for joining us in our happy hour. It's last call. And um, if there's anything, anything else that you would like to add that you forgot to mention about about racing an old boat or, well, I, I heard you all mention the spin sheet crew finder. And I think that we should note for anybody out there watching it who, is, who doesn't quite know what it's all about, go to spinsheet.com, click on the crew finder tab and surf around, check it out, sign up, and be honest about your sailing experience and know that people like, these three people on the call, I'm, I'm hearing at least two of them saying they take a lot of beginners out on boats, a lot of people just to give them the experience of racing and they don't take it too seriously. So find yourself a skipper like these guys and uh, say yes to an invitation. And um, so thank you guys. Thanks for being with us. Sharp is going to come back on and, um, Thanks, everybody. and wrap up.
program for the yeah, night. Thanks, Molly. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Just uh, guys, and also, uh, and Mike, let Christine know that we're gonna we're gonna give her a call for a future program. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, there we go. Well, thanks everybody for joining in. Um, I thank all our guests and Molly. Thanks for, for putting this together. This was really a lot of fun. Um, this is kind of what we're, all these happy hours. Uh, it's what it's about. It's about uh, taking it easy, um, talking about what we like to do, and uh, forgetting about life for a while. I think there's a song in there somewhere. Um, anyway, uh, if you uh, if you haven't, I just want to reiterate: uh, go to spinsheet.com read our digital issue um, we actually just made a big announcement today if you if you didn't hear um, uh, unfortunately because of the circumstances we weren't able to actually print our april issue so that whole issue you can only find online and while you're there why don't you sign up for your free free digital subscription to spin sheet um, and you can always make sure that you actually at least get the opportunity to read it uh, there in our digital flip book um, but um, uh, our May issue is coming out. It's going to come out a little bit late. Uh, it's going to come out on May the 12th. So hang in there. It'll be there as soon as we can. And hopefully uh, we'll also have that out there in your favorite pickup location. Um, again, what Molly said is uh, go to our crew finder. Uh, those days, especially in Maryland, uh, we're going to open up here uh, hopefully soon and uh, be able to go out on the water and uh, the best opportunities you're going to have to do that if you don't have your own boat is to use somebody else's go to our crew finder sign up uh it'll be well worth it um and i think everybody all of our guests have used it in some form or fashion at one point um again thank you to our sponsor bacon sales uh check them out when you get a chance again uh without them without all of our advertisers uh we can't do this um so uh, it's last call. You don't have to go home because you're probably there already. And uh, don't forget to tip your bartender on the way out. Just a new announcement. Um, I not only take uh, uh, PayPal, Apple Pay, and Venmo, but I'm now accepting Bitcoin as well. So you have to <laughs> Bitcoin. Um, outside of that, I hope you guys have a happy and healthy, safe weekend. Uh, take care and tune in with uh, the next Spin Sheet Happy Hour next week. Thanks. Bye. Don't miss another spin sheet video. Subscribe to our channel today.